Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Pokemon Emerald with only fossil Pokemon was a fun tag team challenge. Let's follow that up with a full party run. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Emerald using only HM moves? I'm gonna assume that you've already seen my red and gold runs with only HMs, so you know the drill. The only new HMs in this game are Rock Smash and Dive. Rock Smash isn't actually a new move, but it was a TM in the previous game, weirdly enough. Also, Whirlpool isn't an HM anymore, but we never used it anyway, so that's no real loss. The more important moves here are still Surf, Strength, and Fly. Sorry if my voice sounds a little bit hoarse right now, by the way. I'll talk about it at the end of the video or something. Nobody cares. <laughs> Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I think I can beat Wallace at a reasonable level if I play it smart. Steven Stone might be rough, but I still think that it's possible. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use HM moves. No glitches or exploits. No items in battle. Only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. No need for the Pokemon randomizer this time, I just go ahead and grab a Mudkip since he'll be the best for HMs later in the run anyway. Not really sure if I'm keeping him though. Now, we can't actually start the run until we have the first HM, and unfortunately for us, that's before the first gym. Why is that unfortunate? Well, because if it was after the first gym, then we could just use Water Gun. But it's before the first gym, so I have to use it in that fight. The first gym is the Rock Gym, and you know what the first HM is? Cut. Yeah, I think we're gonna be stuck for a little while. On my way to the Cut HM, I go ahead and catch my Pokémon that I normally use for HMs and Emerald runs, like Zigzagoon and Wingull. I don't know if I'll ever actually use the Wingull in a fight, we'll see, but Zigzagoon is a keeper. It's not that strong, but it's a normal type that learns Cut, and it evolves at level 20, a reasonable level to grind to before the first gym. It's not really much, but it's our best shot. Ours is Lonely Nature though, so more attack and less defense. The whole less defense thing might make the gym rough, but I don't exactly want to spend forever trying to get one with the perfect nature, when I could spend forever grinding this one instead. We can make this work. As soon as we get cut, I give it to our Zigzagoon and grind it up a little bit because there's no way we're winning with cut at level 10. Now that we've got a Pokemon with an HM move, we're not allowed to use regular moves for the rest of the run. I decided to nickname Zigzagoon HMs, by the way. That's what I usually call my HM Zigzagoon in these Emerald runs. Today he gets to be the star attraction, at least for this early part in the run. You know, now that I think about it, I should probably do that for the rest of the Pokemon names. I'm terrible at coming up with nicknames for Pokemon. First try at level 16! Yeah, it's not even close. We did almost nothing, they do a lot. Well, we evolve at level 20, so let's just do that real quick. Okay, so after evolving, we do way more damage, so that's reassuring. I still can't take down the second Geodude, but at least we can get past the first one. I get the feeling that this fight is always going to be pretty random since they spam out so many rock moves that can miss. If we just get a few more levels and hold an Orenberry, then I think we can do this. Okay, level 24. Geodude number one goes well, I guess. She did use a potion and ruined our speed, but that's to be expected. Second was another Geodude that went basically the exact same way, potion and all. We almost lucked out and took one less rock tomb, but then we missed our 95 accuracy cut because of course. Last was Nosepass who wasted the opening turn with block as we landed a crit. Nice. She was smart and used Harden a couple times after that though, so we were quickly doing very little damage. We were able to take her down, but it was kinda close. If she didn't waste her potions on the Geodudes, we would have lost. After the gym, I go straight to the Granite Cave. We do get the HM for Flash here, and it's a decent move, but really I'm here to catch Makahita. I'm not sure if we're even using Flash. I can't use Makahita now since he can't learn Cut, but I'm only one rival fight away from getting the Rock Smash HM. The move sucks, but Makahita gets pretty strong, so in the long run this will probably be a good choice. Jolly Nature is less special attack and more speed, so not bad. Now let's ditch this place and go do the rival fight early. I want Rock Smash. I kind of thought that May would have given us a bit of trouble, but honestly, I think I've just been sleeping on how good Lanoon is. Every time I end up using this thing, it over delivers. I mean, I'm holding the Silk Scarf from Duford, but still. Maybe I should just do a run with it sometime. Anyway, with the rival down, we can go to Moville and grab the HM for Rock Smash. 
Not a strong move, but it's a fighting move. Now let's go do the fighting gym. Wow, they didn't land a hit on us. I didn't think Cut would be working out so well. Okay, well, I still don't think the electric gym is gonna go great. Lenoon is getting pretty strong, but Makahita is still just trying to catch up with experience share. I think I'm gonna need to be maybe level 20 on it, but I think Makahita is our answer to the Magneton at the electric gym. Once I get her to level 20, I'll give it a try. So the fight starts great each time with Cut one-shotting the first two Pokemon, but Magneton is a monster. Makahita hardly does any damage with Rock Smash and goes down quickly, and even though Lanoon can take him to low health, he just uses his Super Potion to heal right back up. Well, I don't think getting more Pokemon is going to help us nearly as much as just getting stronger with the ones we have. We could potentially catch something to teach Flash, but that's probably not the fastest solution to this problem, considering we'd be hoping for quite a few misses to actually win. I wish I could get the Strength HM for a better move now, but we can't actually get it until we can use Rock Smash outside of combat, and that's not until after the Electric Gym. Well, we grind, this is a great time for the Chimera ad. You already know what the site is, a place where you can get some real nice clothes. Well, spring is finally here, and so is Chimera's spring collection. That means there's new stuff for you to buy on the site if you're interested. You guys already know the graphic tees look pretty awesome from all of my hilariously bad home pictures that I've taken of them, but I'm telling you, I love the sweatpants. I'm not even a sweatpants guy. This is literally my first pair of sweatpants since I was, like, a child. But I am wearing them right now. As I write this. They're incredible. <laughs> you can fit a whole Switch in the pocket. You know, for when you're obsessively playing Pokemon Legends Arceus, like I know you are. I mean, that or Animal Crossing. I should really get back to my village, oh my god. <laughs> right, uh, use the discount code MADRIBRED at checkout and let them know that I sent you to get a discount. I've got a gym to beat. Okay, let's try the gym again now that we have Rock Smash Evolved. It goes way better, with us dealing more damage. More importantly though, we have much more health so we can take quite a few more hits before going down. Thanks to some lucky defense drops off Rock Smash, Rock Smash won. I should start just calling my Pokemon by their HM names, just to make it extra confusing. Last was Minetric, so I sent HMs back out. I actually expected this would go better than it did. Like, we still won, but we took a lot more damage than I was expecting. Can't wait to get a better move. Alright, so there's a decent chunk of traveling that we can do now. We have a maxi fight coming up, as well as the fire gym, but there's actually some stuff we can do on the way. There's a new HM soon, as well as some Pokemon that I want. First, I hunt down a Skarmory. It can learn Cut, Rock Smash, and Fly once we get that HM. I don't think it's going to be the most powerful thing on the team, but it's just about the strongest flying type that we can get right now, so I figure I may as well pick one up while I'm here. After that, I go back to Petalburg Woods while I'm south of Meteor Falls to catch Slackoth. It's probably not going to be of any use until it evolves, but I'm sure in the long run having a slacking with strength is probably a good move. Speaking of strength, on our way back to Moville is when we get the HM for strength. It's not an amazing move, but it's an upgrade from Cut, so I will happily take it. Most of our team can learn it, so I'll give it to them right away. I think I'm happy with this. Let's go make some progress. Mighty N is first, so we lose some attack to Intimidate, but it's still just as a two-shot. We got Maxi to waste a Super Potion by using Cut on Zubat, but then we missed again, cause Cut has a 5% chance of missing, and yet I miss all the time. Last was Camerupt, but two hits took it down. Nice and easy. So at the Rock Gym, we can just about sweep our way all the way to Torkoal, so let's fast forward to there. The only interesting thing before Torkoal was Camerupt using Sunny Day. First, what I did was send in Rock Smash to spam, well, Rock Smash. Torkoal loves using Overheat, a move that drops her own special attack. She's holding a White Herb to undo the first debuff, but it's not too hard to bait her into using Overheat over and over. I just kept using Rock Smash with Rock Smash and Fly to try and get defense drops, while she completely destroyed her own special attack although we did never end up getting a defense drop that we were looking for. Once we sent in HMs and her special attack was too low to rely on overheat anymore, we took her out easily with strength. Good fight! Alright, we are only one gym away from finally getting some new moves, but on our way there, I took the Root Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Normal gym time. Spinda is first, so we take it down with strength using Rock Smash, but Psybeam took a decent chunk out of us first. 
Second was Vigoroth, so we Rock Smashed, but really, it couldn't do as much as Strength. Rock Smash is just a really weak move. Anyway, Rock Smash fainted, so we switched to HMs, who was easily able to finish it off with Strength. Next up is Slacking, so I tried to use the strategy of switching on turns where he can use Counter, and attacking on turns where Truant is making him loaf around. I messed up just about instantly by switching to the wrong Pokémon at first, but I managed to get it back on track before too long. It's not a perfect strategy, because sometimes he just hits us anyway, so at some point I just had Fly use Rock Smash a few times for the defense drops. After that, HMs was able to take it out pretty easily. Last was Lanoon, who went down easily in a couple hits after some potions. With the normal gym done, we finally get Surf. This is usually considered the best HM move, and importantly, it's our first move that uses Special Attack. I'm honestly still kind of trying to figure out what water Pokemon I want. I went on Bulbapedia to research and it turns out that Sharpedo, Ludicolo, Crawdont, and Wailord all have almost the exact same base special attack. That's kind of crazy. I think I'll go with Crawdont and Wailord. They both seem pretty awesome. First, I catch a Whalmer just by fishing for a while. You can get these guys just about anywhere, so it's not really much of a hunt. Then I went fishing for a while to get a Corpish. You know, I don't think I've ever used one of these before. It's like an alternate reality Krabby. I kind of love it. I'll try and get these guys to level up a little bit on my way to the rival fight. I think this might be the full team that we roll through the game with. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Okay, last rival fight time. Surf took out Slugma with Surf, HMs took out Grovile with Strength, and Lombre met the same fate. Will May ever win this fight? We get Fly After and teach it to fly. That's the last of our type coverage. Normal, water, flying, and fighting. Not really great, <laughs> especially when our fighting move is 20 power, Ooh. First is Swablu, who we just one-shot with strength, and second is Tropius, who only hit Aerial Ace before going down as well. Pelipper spams Protect a lot, but it really didn't take much to take him down. For Skarmory, I sent in Surf to use Surf, and it did alright damage, but we only hit twice before going down. Skarmory gained defense from Steelwing, but we just sent in Dive to use Surf right after. That's when she used a Hyper Potion to hang on. We crit with a Surf, then hit two more to bring her into red health, and she used a Hyper Potion again before making us faint. Alright, so this is how we're doing the fight. I sent an HMs to spam Strength, and it really wasn't doing much, especially after she got a second defense buff, so I had to just start using Surf. We almost went down, but eventually Skarmory did get taken out. Last was Altaria, and I kept HMs in. We did some great damage, but went down quickly, so I had to have Rock Smash use Strength a couple of times. She was using Dragon Dance, so she ended up taking him down soon after, so we had to send in Fly. Right away we got hit by Dragon Breath and got paralyzed, but it didn't matter because we still hit Fly for the win. Rough fight though. We're going into the last major travel heavy part of the game now, so this is probably the best chance to catch up on levels. Pretty much the whole party are underleveled either than HMs who's been leading the way through basically any trainer battle. I'd be using our new water types more, but I caught them just before getting to the grass area of the game, so it's just bad timing for grinding. Still, we have to get some levels. HMs can probably take on Maxi, but the Psychic Gym is a double battle, and I would really like to have the water types be stronger by then so that we can just spam Surf. You know the drill when it comes to the second Maxi fight. We lose attack, but he always goes for Swagger, so we have a little extra, but end up using it to hit ourselves. Like usual though, once we hit him, we take him down. We keep the attack buff to take down Crobat pretty easily, and last is Camerupt, who just goes down in one Surf. Now, Maxi might have went well, but the Psychic Gym was horrible. Our water types are still about 10 levels lower than their Pokémon, and we just get one shot by Psychic. Not only that, but Surf is doing almost nothing to Clay Doll. We're pretty much completely relying on Surf here, because once we take Clay Doll and Zatu down, they're gonna have two rock types. Plus, we have to worry about Sunny Day since that'll still weaken our water moves. Even with two more Pokémon than them, I can't see us getting past this until we're all either level 40, or our water types are maybe level 46. Grinding water types sucks when you're in the ocean, by the way. I'm sure you can tell. 
All right, no one wants to watch me fail the Psychic Gym a thousand times, so here's the winning attempt. I tried this fight every few levels, and literally every single time we lost in hilarious fashion. Until this one, where we finally were exactly strong enough to beat Clay Doll with two surfs. As soon as we could do that, the entire rest of the fight was super easy. I just had to spend hours grinding water types against water types. Can't wait to at least be able to grind in Victory Road, where there's some rock types. After the gym, we're given Dive by Steven Stone. It's basically water type fly, and it's not quite as strong as surf. Still, we might get some use out of it. Maybe it'll come in handy? Archie fight time. After that last fight, this was super easy. Dive did the whole fight by himself with no problems at all. Oh, and right before we get into the water gym, we get the HM for waterfall, but in this game, it's literally just surf, but with 60 power instead of 90. There's no real reason to use this in battle, considering I'm pretty sure that everything that can learn Waterfall can also learn Surf, so I'm basically just bringing this up to explain why we aren't using it. Maybe it'll be good for finishing someone off to save on power points? Water Gym time. First is Love Disc, so I tried to take it down with Dive using Strength. It worked well, but we got hit with a critical flail right at the end, so that sucked. Whiskash is part grand, so I had Surf use Surf for great effect. He used Amnesia, so I switched to Strength, but that ended up letting him live just long enough to hit Earthquake. Our next hit took him down. Next is Celio, so Surf stayed in to spam Strength. We took some Body Slams, but Strength got us the win. We stayed in and used Strength against Crawdont. You'd think that we'd lose because his defense and attack are both better, but he was just using the Water-type Crab Hammer, so we still won. Last was Kingdra, so I switched to Strength. Naturally, he did exactly what I was afraid of and used double team and then rest. The only way for us to win is to land two hits in a row before he wakes up from rest too. Well, rest again. This should be easy, but he wakes up from his first rest instantly with a berry and his double team makes us miss, so this takes quite a while. Entire minutes went by where he never got a chance to attack us before we finally hit twice in a row for the win. Last before the Elite Four is the Wally fight. It starts alright with Dive taking on his Altaria. He used a Floor Restore to stay healthy longer, but he wasted the extra turn that he got with Safeguard, so we held on. We sent in Fly to take on Rosalia, but it took a few hits thanks to the huge level difference. We also missed a 95 accuracy move, because of course. Next is Megaton, so I sent in Rock Smash to use Rock Smash, but it really didn't do much. It didn't take long before we went down from Thunderbolt, but we did manage to lower his defense a few stages first. That made it easy for Strength to come in and finish the job. Out to Surf for Delcaddy and we critted for a one-shot, and last was Gardevoir. She never even landed a hit, we just spammed Surf. Sorry, Wally, that was the best you've done in a year and you still lost pretty bad. Okay, now that we're at the Elite Four, I would normally look at our stats, but it's instantly obvious that we are not ready yet. A lot of Pokémon in the Elite Four resist water, and our water types using Surf is the best move we have right now. That means I need Fly to get stronger so Fly becomes usable, and I need Strength to become strong enough that I can deal crazy damage when he's needed. And he'll be needed. I think HMs is probably gonna just fall behind, but then again I've got a bad habit of underestimating how strong a Lanoon is, so uh, who knows. This isn't exactly a short grind, but it's much faster than grinding in the ocean, and we're not strong enough to grind by fighting the Elite Four anyway. After the grind, here's our stats. We're looking a bit better, but I still kind of figure that we're going to get stuck at Drake. I still think that Surf with Surf and Dive and Strength with Strength are pretty much our only great moves, so we might have a rough time. I went ahead and deleted all of the non-HM moves at the move deleter, by the way. We weren't using them anyway, so I figured I may as well just delete them all to avoid the chance of a misclick. I have been known to fumble and pick dumb moves, as I'm sure you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, earlier in this run, I switched to the wrong Pokemon in a battle once. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Dark Trainer Sydney. So he sends out Mighty Anna right away, who just went down in one surf from surf, but second was Cacturn, so I had to switch over to Fly. One hit took him all the way down to red health, and he just used Cotton Spore, so I went for Cut to finish him, but he full restored. That's fine. We took a faint attack, then hit Fly again, just for him to hang on with a sliver. 
We took another faint attack before we actually took him down. Out to dive for the Crawdaunt Mirror match. We went for Strength and Surf as he used Swords Dance to power up his... Strength? Hey, that's my move! You can't use my move! He's just a mimic who can't fight! Oh my god, I wish I could remember that low-key tweet well enough to recite it. <laughs> You know the one. Look, if any of you watching this even know who Low Key is, then you know the 2021 Seth Rollins tweet. <laughs> All right, sorry, I'm alienating the 100% of you who have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, Shifter is next, so we start trying to fly again, but we got confused and just hit ourselves a bunch while he built up his double teams. I thought this would be a pain, but then Fly ended up being a one-shot. Absol got taken out in two hits of strength by strength to finish the fight. Second was Ghost Trainer Phoebe. Nothing much interesting to say about this one though, we just spammed Surf and Waterfall until we won. They were able to take out Surf, but Dive could finish it just fine. Third is Ice Trainer Glacia. First is Celio, so I had Strength use Strength to take it to low health. She set up Hail and hit us with Body Slam for a small chunk of damage before we took her down. We switched into Surf for Glalie since it's a pure ice type and thus doesn't resist water. Icy Wind and Crunch did just about nothing to us and our Surf's two shot her. As the second Celio came out, I sent in Strength to use the same strategy as last time, but it didn't go nearly as well thanks to getting hit by Attract. Now we're losing turns to Truant and Attract. We took her down, but not before going into red health. I sent in Surf to take out the second Glalie the same way as the first, and last was Walrein. I sent in Strength to land the first big hit, knowing that he'd just get taken out right after. As soon as he did, I sent in Dive, since he's got some decent attack and defense, and just started using Strength. Thanks to us resisting her Surf, she couldn't really do much. Unfortunately, we didn't do a ton, and she had another full restore, so it wasn't exactly quick. She did go down, but not before taking her to red health, so I sent in Surf to finish it. Unfortunately, she had yet another full restore. Thanks to that and her body slam paralyzing us, we actually went down and had to finish it with Fly. That Walrein is a beast. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Drake. So this fight starts hilariously badly, as Shelgon gave us issues for what might be the first time in one of these runs. He took out three of our Pokemon. It was the weakest three, but still, we had to finish it off by bringing in Dive. Altaria was after, and it spammed Dragon Dance, but we lucked out and critted on the first strength. The second one almost took it down, but it managed to hit Double Edge to take out half our health. It knocked itself out in the process, though. I sent in Strength to hit Strength on Kingdra as he used Dragon Dance. This one doesn't just spam Rest, though, so we just had to tank two Surfs, although we lost tons of health in the process out to surf for his Flygon, and we ended up losing most of our health to Earthquake. We win, but being slower really destroyed us. And of course, as soon as Salamence comes out, we get outsped and swept. Honestly, I can't believe we even got to Salamence. Look, none of you actually want to watch me grind, right? I'm gonna go run through the Elite Four for some experience real quick, and we'll be back. So, something worth pointing out here, this fight is incredibly hard. Since I'm just fighting the Elite Four over and over for levels, I get to try and test out our team against Drake pretty often, and on most attempts, we don't even make it to Salamence. Like, would you look at how much higher our levels are than the previous attempt you saw? And yet because of the awkward amounts of damage we're causing to his team, he's using full restores at worse times, so the battle has actually gotten harder. Having to use Strength and Surf for everything kinda sucks. Okay, roughly 1 billion run-throughs later and we're finally taking out Shelgon reasonably quickly with Surf. I mean, I say quickly. It takes two hits, but he spams Protect for long enough that it takes a little bit more than two rounds. Strength does awesome damage to Altaria, but it's not a one-shot, and he actually plays pretty smart, managing to get two double edges in and some Dragon Dances before going down. Out to dive for Kingdra, and I just spammed Strength. His body slams didn't do much damage thanks to our high defense, but we did end up getting paralyzed right before we took him out, so Dive is pretty much done. Surf did a great job of taking down Flygon, but we still don't have a speed advantage, so we took tons of damage in the process. Last was Salamence, so first I sent in Rock Smash to use... Rock Smash. I really wanted to get his defense down. Rock Smash isn't nearly as leveled up as the rest of the party though, so he only got to hit him once. I sent in Strength after to just swing for the fences, and it did a lot. 
but we got crit by a dragon claw and taken out by flamethrower. I'd have taken him down for sure if not for that crit, by the way. I sent in Fly, who instantly lost most of his health to Flamethrower. Fly itself didn't do much damage, and then he used a full restore, so I thought we were doomed. I kept trying to Fly, but naturally, he just used Flamethrower to beat us. I sent in Dive to use Strength, and he actually hit one before going down. Only Surf and HMs left, so I sent in Surf. We hardly hung on from Dragon Claw, took him to red health, then fainted. Last is HMs, who's 10 levels lower than Salamence. We got outsped, taken to 30 health, then we finished him off with strength. That was insanely close. Finally, Pokemon Champion Wallace. First is Waylord, so I had Dive use strength, and it crit right away. Waylord just made it rain, and then healed up with a full restore, but we have the speed advantage, so we got another two strengths in before he finally hit us with double edge. He went down pretty easy. Second is Ludicolo, so I had Fly use Fly. Ludicolo used double team loads, but we never missed a fly, so it actually went great. For Tentacruel, we landed a one-shot with strength that I really wasn't expecting. And fourth is Whiskash, so we had Surf use Surf. Same as the last time we fought Whiskash, we surfed it to have health, and he used Amnesia. It's okay, his Hyper Beam wasn't that strong, and our strengths took him down. Fifth is Water Onyx, so I sent in Dive, knowing that he can't lose attack to Intimidate. Strength was doing great damage as he built up his Dragon Dance, but he hyperbeamed fast to take us out. That's fine, Strength finished him while he was recharging. Last is Melodic, so I sent in Surf knowing that he could tank pretty well. Problem is, he has Recover and used it for minutes on end. It just got to the point where we had to start switching to other Pokemon to keep the fight going. I thought Strength was going to be able to win it, but then he got hit with Toxic, so I actually had to start switching to our weaker Pokemon just to let them take hits so that Strength would stay healthy for longer. It took forever, but it paid off in the end, as one of the times we switched back to Strength, he got the knockout. With that victory, we get into the Hall of Fame and win the run, but you know it's not over yet. There's a post-game fight with Steven Stone that we always try. Considering we're allowed to use rare candy cheats in the post-game now that the challenge is over, I'm confident that we can do this. I'm just curious as to what level we have to be, because I think Metagross is going to be a bit of a brick wall. First attempt is at the same level we did the Pokemon Champion fight, and obviously we lose badly. They take down both of our dudes who use Surf, and that just totally dooms us because we need that for Claydol and Armaldo. Let's Rare Candy the team up to level 75 and give this a real try. Okay, after a few more attempts of being hit by Toxic right away, we get a run where Surf just two shots Skarmory, and we only got hit by Aerial Ace. Much better than before. Egron was a one shot with Surf, and third was Cradilly. I tried sticking with Surf and it was doing decent damage, but as soon as he pulled out Giga Drain, I realized I had to switch. I sent in Fly, and although we were dealing very little damage, he was too. Still, he was using Ingrain to heal every single turn, so it was pretty brutal. The funny thing is, his only attacking moves have 5 power points each, so he ended up completely running out of power points on all of his attacking moves over the course of a few minutes. Eventually, Fly fainted, but we just sent in Strength to overpower him. All he could do was confuse us with Confuse Ray and spam Ingrain. It's a weird way to win, but hey, it worked! It took forever, but we did get him to waste a few full restores. It took longer to take down this one Cradilly than it took me to beat Wallace. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyway, Claydol was next and Surf did tons of damage, so he just used up another full restore, but not before setting up Light Screen for special defense. We take him down, and next is the pseudo-legendary Metagross, so I started sending in the cannon fodder to use Rock Smash, hoping for the defense drops. Yeah, I forgot he has clear body, so he won't actually get any defense drops. We wasted a lot more time because of that, and a couple Pokemon. Not only that, but he raised his attack with Meteor Mash. I ended up just sending in Strength to try and overpower it, but it was hardly doing anything. He took us down in two hits and got even more attack in the process, so I really thought we were doomed. All that's left is Dive and Surf, so I sent in Dive to use Surf, and it hit pretty hard. Earthquake took us down to only 4 health, but we made him faint on the follow-up. Last was his Armaldo, but we're faster, and we took him to red health. He slashed us, so we fainted, and we sent in our 20 health Surf. He full restored, and our Surf left him with a sliver again. It turns out we're faster than him, though, and we take him out on the follow-up. That had to have been the closest Steven Stone fight I have ever had. 
That was a weird one. I was worried that it was going to be a bit boring because most of the HM moves are pretty bland in combat, but we actually ended up getting a few really interesting battles out of it. I hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon challenge will be in two weeks on Saturday, like usual, but is going to have to be a mystery on what it'll be. <laughs> Mostly because I haven't decided yet. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Uh, outro ad libby time thing, where I just talk about things and I, I have nothing written down. What do, what do I even talk about? This run was a kind of a fun one. It, it was kind of back and forth. The grind in the ocean sucked. I don't know how well I put that over, but believe it or not, I don't want to bore you to death with three straight minutes of just showing you a bunch of grinding footage and talking about how this grind sucks. Uh, cause that will get really, really boring and I'm sure you're sick of hearing me say it cause I've made <laughs> over a hundred of these challenges, so you've heard me say it plenty. I'm currently in the process of editing a little bit more of that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Let's Play with Gooset and What a Geek. That's up on the channel if you want to see more of that. Uh, life updates, what else do I talk? Okay, yeah, so literally yesterday, uh, I almost choked to death last night. That was wild. <laughs> Um, so that's, I guess that's on my mind. I, I was saying earlier at the beginning of the video, my voice might be a little bit hoarse, but I feel like it got less hoarse as it went on. Had a bit of a coughing fit last night because of choking. Uh, turns out when your throat's really dry and you're phlegmy because you feel a little bit sick, and then you eat a whole bunch of like really overcooked chicken, the tiniest little, little sliver of chicken is all it takes to make you not be able to breathe anymore. Thankfully, my wife was there and she knows the Heimlich Maneuver because she did, uh, was it CPR training? No, not CP- is that CPR? Yeah, yeah, she did like the training for that back when she was a manager at Starbucks back in the day, so she knew what to do and honestly, the moment her hands were around me, I felt like I was gonna barf and I coughed it up anyway. So really, it was my life being in danger for maybe 10 seconds? Uh, but, but hey, pro tip, always have a glass of water before your meal. You never know when a dry throat's gonna make that happen. It's the tiniest bit of meat. Uh, but yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm still working. I mean, that happened less than 24 hours ago and I'm doing a voiceover, so I must be fine. The show must go on. Uh, that, that's all I gotta talk about today, I guess. I, I'm gonna get working on editing this stuff because I'm already falling behind a little bit because I wanted to do the voiceover yesterday, uh, but that's a little bit difficult when you can't breathe. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.